Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Feng Jiao Wang. I'm a res research scientist. And uh, now it's, it's my one, uh, first year anniversary at Critio. And this is my very first job <laughs> out of the university. So yeah. So I think I will zoom in a little bit of the universal catalog, what's going on, and what's uh, uh, machine learning problems uh, exist there, and uh, what is the motivation why we want to solve those problems. And also, I will focus on one of the problems. And here is my outline. First of all, I will talk about the problems. And then I will talk about the solutions we develop. So mainly include three types of solutions. First is very simple and naive solution. And next, we, I, I will explain a little bit about we use text information. And then I will talk about use image information. And then conclude with some of my thoughts during my one year experience at Creative. So as, as Suju already uh, talked about, that Creative helps advertisers to display their ads on the internet. So each uh, advertiser or each partner will upload their catalog to our catalog database. So imagine that each partner will have their own catalog. And uh, when they upload their catalog in our database, we literally have uh, different catalogs in our database. And, uh, in, in that sense, in our database, um, the, there are several fields are uh, mandatory. So partner will upload this information like the product uh, name and the product uh, image. But for some other information like brand um, category, those are optional. Means that the partner can include that information or not. And they also have their choice like what type of, what information they want to include. So imagine there's a lot of heterogeneous uh, information there and we want to make sense out of the data. So here's a very simple example of the universal catalog. Uh, basically, we have three partners, partner one, partner two, partner three, and we have three products from the different partners. You can see these three products are actually the same product. They are all, they are all the iPhone X, uh, 64 gigabyte silver color. And uh, you, can, you can see here is that uh, the name of three products are slightly different. And also image of these three products are also slightly different and also category is different. So with this heterogeneous information, we will, there's uh, several problems exist, uh, machine learning problems exist in universal catalog. So first problem we identified is that we want to unify these different products because in reality, they are, they are just the same product, right? And also knowing that them, they, are, they belong to the same products can help us to boost our core machine learning engine and also help uh, clients to maybe pr uh, provide more new service to our clients. So we want to know these three different products are actually the same products. So what information we can use? First information we can use is name. You can see that the name of these three products are actually slightly different. So we have our way to handle the text information to to predict that these three products are actually the same one. And also we can use the image information and the category or brand information. The other problem uh, in universal catalog is called attribute unification. Attribute, um, I mean here is like category or brand. So you can see here for the three, for three different partners, uh, their category information of these three different products are quite different. They, they can use cell phone to describe this product, or they can use electronics, or they can just left it empty. But what we want is that we want to have a unified category for these same, same products. And also we, we want to fill in those blanks to say, okay, this product is actually cell phone. And we want to utilize this information to boost our uh, machine learning engine, also provide new service. Um, so for the, for the two problems I talk about uh, in, exist in universal catalog, I will mainly focus on the product unification problem. So here's a, I will give a two use case of why do we want to solve the product unification problem. First use case is that imagine uh, there's a client and uh, they want us to help them to promote some products from certain brand. 
and we need to know which partner actually sells the products. Without unifying those products, we don't have a full picture of this problem. And the second use case is that if we know that one customer is already purchased certain product, like we, we may not want to recommend the same product as, as a very short time. So here's the two use case for this problem. And of course, there's a lot of challenges exist in this problem. First challenge is that large scale problem. We have uh, billions of products in our database. And the second challenge is that we actually do our business in different continent, different platform like the US and also EU, European and also Asia. So so the products are being described in different languages. We need to cooperate this we need to tackle these challenges like to see we need to handle that even if products is described in different language, we can still make sure that we know they are the same product. And the third challenge, of course, is that we, it, it is a problem lack of the ground truth. We, we don't have much information tell us, okay, these are the same products and we can based on this ground truth to build our prediction model. So the first solution I'm thinking about is, is exact match. So here is a important clarification of the, what I mean exact match. Exact match is not everything exactly same. So it's, it's just a partial exact match. For example, the two products can have the same, uh, same name, but they can have the different description or different images. This is what I mean is a partial exam match. So motivation for me to develop such of the um, solution is that first uh, motivation is that domain knowledge can help us to judge the reliability of these approaches. What I mean here. So when we develop the traditional machine learning solutions, we usually have a bunch of the ground truths and we want to develop a model and use the evaluation metrics to evaluate. Okay, this is good algorithm and that is bad algorithm. But the the good thing of using this exam match is that we can actually summarize what cases have been, uh, what products have been uh, unified. And we can ask our experts who has uh, business uh, knowledge to, to decide, okay, this product should be unified, that product should not be unified. So it can, it, it is slightly different from traditional like machine learning. We have the bunch of the training data and then to decide, okay, whether to accept this algorithm or not. And the second motivation is that um, when we, when we do our uh, analysis and we find that this exact match can actually lay the groundwork for any sophisticated approach. So let's say we, we want to use uh, any like the deep learning model or other sophisticated models. But the first thing we need to do is actually to use this ex exact match to see how much percent of the products we can unify by this exact match. Clarify on this, then we can, we can see how much incremental improvement we can get um, by using some sophisticated algorithms. So here is the overall performance. We studied a few of the exam match approaches. First approaches we studied is using product URL. So if two products has exactly same URL, then we are, say, we are saying that they are the same product. So, and also the same thing applies to image URL and title and description and description only and title only. So we can see that um, using the product URL, image URL, and also title and description, which already brings 15% of products, means that we already can unify 15% of products. It's a good chunk. And also with the description title, uh, the percentage goes as high as 37%. So. As this perspective, I can see it's a good algorithm. I think it's a good solution. So here I will show some uh, examples which I, which I studied using this exact match solution. Uh, I want to say that the characteristics of this exact match type of solution is that recall is not perfect. Means that we know there are always there are some products in the database we cannot be unified by the exact match solution. But on the other hand, the precision can be very good. Means that we, the products we unified is correct. So here I show one example is the products uh, unified by the product URL. The two products have the exactly same brand, but just differing color. 
So we decide that we want to accept this case as the uh, same product because uh, they are just different, differing color and the other things are exactly the same from the same brand and the same style, everything's the same. And here is another example which um, different products is unified by image URL and this two, these products are only differing size means that, okay, th this shoes size six, size seven, we want to group them as the same products to recommend to the user. And this case is also two, two products uh, unified by image URL. But the things a little bit tricky here is that um, you can see, although the two products have the exactly, contains exactly same uh, baby food, but the size of the two products or price of the two products is not exactly same because one product contains 24 bottles of them and the other product contains six six uh, bottles of them i think um from the from the another business point of view this can be a tricky case means that if we recommend if we display ads to a user a customer and the customer buys buys product, by the first product and second product, the value we bring to the partner is different. Means that the price of the product is different. And the third case I want to show here is that uh, using, uh, we use title and description exact match um, to to unify the products. And these two products, difference of these two products is that they are the exactly same book, but one is hardcover and the other is ebook. So we unify these two products into the same. And and here's the, so I want to give a little bit more detail of the exact match solution we uh, we developed. Um, so of course it's not if they are. Uh, exact match, then we will say they, they are the same products. There are some, uh, we use some threshold to control our solution. Means that, um, for, ex for example, the product URL. In, in our database, for some product, the URL of this product is very short. Means that it only contains domain name, nothing else. If we unify this type of products into one group, it will unify a lot of products, which, which does not make sense. So we control our group size to not to be too large, and also we control the length of the, our URL not to be too, too short. So here's our here's a exact, exact match solution we explored. And the other solution we explored is using text information. So we, we just pick a, pick a number of products in our database and uh, look how, what kind of the text information or what kind of solution makes sense in our data. I we come out with this. We, we think that ngram uh, algorithm is a uh, very, good, very good algorithm fit into our problem. ngram means that a continuous sequence of n words from giving sample, sample of text. So basically we compile the name of the two products and see uh, see the similar uh, and si similar sequence of n words of the two products. Uh, by comparing this, um, by comparing these two titles, we can see how similar these two products can be. So here are a few examples. One example, um, the so they both the type, both the name of these two products uh, have uh, very similar in most sense. And the other solution we explored is image solution. Of course, image is very informative, and we use uh, image information in a lot of problems in Creative. And the characteristics of the using image information in product unification is that same products can have very different images. For example, if we want to take a photo of the, take a photo of the phone, we can take the photo in different angles, and also we can show the front uh, front picture or end picture of the phone. So, the same products can have very different images. And second thing is that different products could have very similar images. And solution we explored here first is perceptual hash. So this perce perceptual hash is used in industry to identifies very similar products, like to find the copyright, uh, to identify the copyright problems. 
So the idea is that they want they want the the perceptual hash is to try to generate a fingerprint of the image, and then use this uh, then compare the hash of the two products if they are similar or not. And the other solution we explore is called is called um, sift. So which is a very classic uh, image processing solution which generates the general features of the images, like the general the descriptors of the, like uh, unique things of these images, and then compare how different these two images can be. So to give a sense of the, how these two algorithms uh, two algorithm perform in our case, it is that perceptual hash actually gives uh, better results. Means that it has uh, it improves uh, recall by nine nine point and uh, with a little bit sacrifice of the precision. Um, but uh, for the sift algorithm, we are able to manage to run it. Uh, sift algorithm is more time consuming. We are able to manage to get the result, but it is not as good as perceptual hash. Well, which means that I think the lesson I learned from this uh, experiment is that the p hash is uh, actually uh, a better fit to our problem. Here's a few examples of the p hash and the sift. So I want first explain the term of the true positive. So in the information retrieval, the true point, true positive actually means that, you know, we have the ground truth information and and we have the prediction. The true means that our prediction is correct, and the positive means that these two products are actually belong to the same products. So we can see using p hash, we can actually unify the products. Uh, one of the products image uh, does not contain the mark, the other contains mark. And this p hash are able to handle this variance. And the other example is that these two images actually have very different resolution. But p hash can also handle this variance. But p hash is, of course, is not perfect. So there are some false positive case. False positive here means that our predict is in incorrect and we think it belongs to the same product, but it's not. So the things we learn from this, this exercise is that uh, this p hash is tend to compare the outline of the two images. So they have the very similar outlines, but details they are different. So, so we can we can see here actually sift algorithm can catch the detail information. In that sense, the SIFT algorithm tells us these two socks are actually different. And um, come down to the, to the things I want to, I think this is a very good opportunity for me to talk about the, my work. And also I want to summarize my work and uh, think about what I learned from this one year work experience. So these are three messages I, I want to tell myself. Also, it may be helpful for some of you. So first message I want to address here is know your problem. I think there's, there can be a lot of things. So the things I learned from my recent project is that how to define and formulate the problem. For example, uh, the, what is the right objective I want to optimize for? I think it's very challenging. And also, what's the case I need to solve, what case I need to not? Because for our, because my prob, uh, product unification problem actually touches billions of products, but some of the products have very high business value, some of the products are actually not. So I may want to experiment on very small data set first to get some sense what algorithm works, what not, then apply my algorithm on the bigger data set. And also, what analysis could lead to the good solutions? And what is the simplest and valid solution here? And also, the research may take some time. And when we're doing some research, the problem itself can change. Means that some part of the problem can be different from the, the very beginning we touch the problem. So how to cope the, with this problem changes along the way we develop the solution is one thing I'm asking myself. Also, the second message I want to give here is ask the right question. So I'm not the type of person who likes to ask a lot of questions, but I think in this industry environment, I need to lot, 
I need to ask the, a lot of questions. I think there's mainly three types of questions that I need to ask. First is context info, contextual information. So what is the information I need to solve my problem? And the second, second, pro, second type of question is that I want to question the fundamental assumptions of the problem. And third type of thing I want to ask is that, can we do ABC to solve the problem? Is that a valid solution? Can I try that direction? Maybe that is a val maybe that is the right question. So I the things I learned here is that it takes time to ask the right question at the right time. So I'm on that process. I think I'm the on the right track. It just takes me time to <laughs> ask the right question. <laughs> and third things I want to share here is that think twice before you act. So sometimes Logic reasoning is quite important for my work. Means that some of the some of work is maybe has very low low chance of the success. So maybe I do not need to want to try that direction um, with the time limit. So I, the thing I want to tell myself is that think twice before I act. Maybe I can improve my work efficiency. Yeah, that's all my presentation. <laughs>